Lord Jesus, we thank you that you're not done. The life we've lived up to this point is not the totality of what you're doing in our lives. And so we come to you right now just with open hearts, open minds, ready to receive all that you have, ready to believe for you to do the things that we haven't even seen happen. We can't even imagine they're possible, but you do them. Lord, have your way in this service. Have your way in our hearts. We pray right now for our youth who are at youth convention. Bless them, Lord God. Let them have encounters with you that will change the course of their lives. Oh, Father, we believe for this generation. We don't shake our heads and say, oh, my. We nod our heads and say, yes, this will be the next great generation that loves you, that serves you, that gives their all for you. Father, I pray for the needs here in this church family, for those that are struggling with loss as they've lost family members. This past week, Lord, we pray your comfort. Holy Spirit, be the comforter. Be the counselor to draw close. Wrap your arms around them. Let them know they are not alone. Father, we pray for those who are sick in their bodies that you'll bring healing in the name of Jesus Christ. We just speak that out. Be healed in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray you will touch each one of us. Don't leave us where we are, but take us into the next new thing you have for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to take a moment to pray for, for a family in our church and a, a young girl who's a part of our church. Um, Camden Herod, uh, Dan and Marlena Herod's daughter, she had a seizure yesterday, had to go to the ER and then eventually be flown to Green Bay. Uh, we praise the Lord. She is conscious now and able to speak, um, but they're keeping overnight for observations. Camden is just an amazing little girl who loves Jesus and loves everyone she meets. Uh, but the Herods have been through a lot of difficulty in their life, um, and especially in their, the, the face of their children. So let's pray as their church family for healing for Camden and for the Lord to comfort uh, the Herods as well. So let's just go to them as pray for her as she were your own daughter or granddaughter. Heavenly Father, we come with fervent, effective prayers right now for, for Cammy. We say be healed in Jesus' name. Whatever the cause of this seizure was, we pray you will rectify it in her brain, in her body. We pray there is no more seizures to come. There is no long-term problems over her, but we pray health in the name of Jesus. And then we pray for Dan and Marlena and, and Logan, who is, who is Camden's brother. We pray that you will comfort them that you will surround them, that they will know they are not alone, not only because you are with them, but we are standing alongside in faith, in love, in care. And we pray what the enemy has intended for evil, you will turn it around and use it for good because they love you and they are called according to your purposes, Lord Jesus. So once more, we say health in Jesus' name and peace through the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the work you're already doing, Lord. Lord Jesus, we give you the rest of this service and this time. Touch us. Be glorified, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, you can be seated, those of you who are with us in person. Those of you joining us online, thank you for being a part of this and worshiping with us. You know, we, we know distance separates us, but... The Holy Spirit is wherever we are, even if we gather digitally, so welcome. Um, well, I just want to introduce myself and my wife. I'm Nathan. I'm the lead pastor here at Highland, and this is my wife, Christy. And uh, you do not need to clap for us. <laughs> Appreciate it, but no, thank you. Um, but if you're new around here, uh, if you're checking us out in person or online, welcome. We're so glad you decided to spend some of your time with us. Uh, we just trust that God drew you here. You know, he had a plan. He allowed you to get up, get out, turn on the computer, whatever it was, and be a part of this. So get ready to receive even more of what God has for you. Um, we'd love to get to know you a little bit as you're getting to know us, and there's an easy way to do that. 
Good morning, everyone. I would say this is the fullest house I've seen in a long time, but maybe I'm, I'm not good at numbers, but I'm so happy to see like a full house, right, guys? Yeah. This is so fun. Good to see you all here today. Hey, I would love for you guys to connect with us, especially if you're newer to Highland Church. Fill out one of those connection cards you'll find in your pew or in the description online if you're watching us there so that we can get to know who you are and have your contact information in case there's any fun things that we need to send your way. And then if you have any prayer requests or praise reports, please be in touch about th those. We have a big, long list of people that are um, receiving emails if there's a prayer request. And if you want to be a part of that, just put a note on the bottom of the connection card. And we pray for those needs. And we get to hear about when God comes through. And so make sure that you do that today. Get those connection cards in the offering basket at the end of service. We are a church that doesn't just believe about reaching central Wisconsin, but the world. That's what God has called us to do, to go into all the world and make disciples, to reach our hometown, our nation, and our world. And so we give uh, our best gift offering a huge portion of that to missions. And uh, we're going to hear a little more from a missionary today who's very close to our hearts. Yes. So you know how they say, all you need to do to change the world is make a difference in one life. I want to share with you guys just a little bit about how Pastor Troy has made a difference in my life. I already have my tissues. Get ready. I hate to do this to you before you speak. But so if you don't know me, you'll hear a little bit more about me. Just I grew up really learning about God because of Little House on the Prairie. I don't know if you've watched it, but she goes to the mountain. I knew about Jesus. I think I went to Christmas and Easter sometimes, and so I didn't know a lot about God. But when I was uh, 15 years old, my friend invited me to youth group, and it was at the very same time that Pastor Troy was just getting signed on as the youth pastor of the church. And for the first time ever, I heard a message that they said, Pastor Troy said, um, if you don't know if you're going to heaven or hell for sure, raise your hand. And I had sat through a few services that said, do you want to uh, accept Jesus in your heart? And I was like, I don't know about that. But I was like, nobody knows if they're going to heaven or not. So I raised my hand. <laughs> and I went up, and he prayed the sinner's prayer with me. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to do good. I'm really excited you're here. I'm a very emotional person. Okay. So... I prayed the sinner's prayer, and he ended up calling me that week for follow-up and said, hey, do you want to go to Subway, and you can ask any questions you want. And so honestly, you guys, my questions were, what is the difference between God and Jesus? I didn't know anything. And this man showed me what it means to disciple, to share the gospel. Okay, give me a sec. He has such a love for teenagers, and it's gone on for his whole life. And I have a love for teenagers. Nathan does. And he's passed on so many things to me. He took me on my very first missions trip to Guatemala and somehow trusted me to lead a devotional. And what is so cool about God is every step of your story leads to the next thing. I strongly believe that every season of life is just investment into what God wants to do in the future. And the scripture I chose that day was Isaiah 61 because we were going to a women's prison. So I looked up in the back of my Bible, prison. <laughs> yes, it was very spiritual. Um, and I shared about Isaiah 61, which says how we're going to set the prisoners free. And what's so cool is Throughout my life, I didn't expect it, but um, in 2008, I, I had a call for helping with human trafficking, which is modern-day slaves. And God brought that scripture back to me and kind of used it as confirmation, like, this is what I've always had for you. <laughs> ah, I hate when I do it right in the microphone. Anyway, it's so cool how it all comes together. This man baptized me in water prayed for me to be filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the Spirit. He married Nathan and I, so I don't know if that makes three of us married. I'm not sure. The way that that's worded sounds funny. He married us. And then when God did call me to help with human trafficking, it was because God used him because that whole weekend when he was showing me about human trafficking, and I was like, what am I supposed to do? A long story short, God showed me that um, Moldova, Eastern Europe, was the poorest country in Eastern Europe 
and was the number one exporter of human trafficking victims. And I learned that the weekend that I first learned about human trafficking, and I was like, so coincidental that my youth pastor just became a missionary to Moldova, Eastern Europe, which I had never heard about before. And God really used that as confirmation, and I was able to travel there that next year and interview people to learn about human trafficking because this man helped set it all up. <laughs> and it's just been such a blessing to know him and his wife, Heidi, and just have them be such an integral part of my faith story. And if he never made a difference in anybody else's life, I just want you to consider, like, he made a difference in my life, and I bet he never even anticipated all the things I would go off to do in the world. Um, but make a difference in one life, you guys. This man has done that, and not only that, I'll stop soon. He taught me about evangelism explosion when I was a teenager. I don't know if you knew this, but it was a program about evangelism. And he has such a heart to share the gospel. And I didn't grow up on Awana or any of that, but I learned so many scriptures because that program made me memorize all these things that didn't make sense to me then, but they make sense to me now. And I've shared so many times during conversations these scriptures. So anyway, he's awesome. He was my youth pastor. He's a missionary to Moldova. His obedience to go to another country when he was totally comfy in the States is just amazing. And so he is a missionary, but he'll always be Pastor Troy to me. We love him. I hope that I, I helped you look better and not weirder. Um, but you know that I, I'm the one who can make him laugh over and over again, but I'm not sure if he's laughing at me or with me. But I love Pastor Troy, so I'll let Nathan do the official tying up all the knots introduction. So thank you. Love you, Pastor Troy. Thank you, honey. I honestly don't think I can add anything more as an introduction. Uh, Pastor Troy, we love you. We're so glad you're with us today. Come on up and share what God's doing through you and what you have for us today. <laughs> oh, wow. You know what? I remember in 2016 when we were here, you, it's like, wow, Christy, you have such a big heart. And, you know, all I can say in Romanian is Slava Domna Lui, because uh, in Romanian that just means the glory, the praise belongs to the Lord. And, uh, you know, sometimes we never realize little things we do. Sometimes it's sharing a verse with somebody, sharing a word of encouragement, spending a little extra time, having a listening ear, whatever, helping in some small way that that person feels like you saved their life or did something so incredible. And uh, I think we just, we just try and be Jesus on a daily basis, right? And, and he puts us where he needs us. But um, needless to say, I I'm, I'm really miss my wife being here. And maybe you can see her there, Heidi. And you love Heidi too, I know, right? <laughs> um, Nathan would cry if he was talking about my wife. Um, She's only missed two times this whole year. Where we've been home since uh, mid-February. This is our year home itinerating. For those of you who are kind of new to missions within our fellowship, we're, as career missionaries, we're on the field four years, and then we come home for a year and every Sunday. And sometimes during the week we're sharing in churches or groups and whatever opportunities we can have. So we... <laughs> Heidi's only missed two times this, this year, once because of grandkids in Arizona, and the other time because she was not feeling well coming into this weekend. So she so missed being here. Um, I am super pumped to be here. Uh, you know, we're, we're at all different places, but when we get to come and be with a young couple that has been so meaningful in our lives, and we've been able to watch. I mean, we know each other from youth group days, from doing things in youth group and see you at the pole and Evangelism Explosion and Youth Alive and going on mission trips. What do we do? Guatemala, Bolivia, and another one, El Salvador. Um, we have had quite a few trips down there in Latin America, but uh, just so many things, and Nathan's family, uh, one of his parents, his sister, just one of the closest families that, and, and 
his parents are in many ways mentors to me, just uh, s such a strong family, and just saw your parents uh, in the past few months, but anyway, we're, we're kind of sitting in the living room, just the three of us talking here and catching up, but um, incredibly just proud of what God's doing in your lives, and how he's placed you at this church 17 years now, and when I come here, this is like home because I'm a Wassa boy, uh, I'm born and raised there, went to D.C. Everest, played sports against these Stevens Point people here back in the day, but uh, yeah, just love this area, and it's always so comfortable when we come back, and then to have just wonderful friends and now co-laborers in, in the kingdom, uh, in the ministry, um, leading this, this great church, and I know this is a great church in mission, so it's wonderful to be here, and we have, I, uh, that first song we sang, I, I don't know your name, it was just beautiful, something about the great things of God, and I, I, there's, a, there's a psalm, Psalm 126, 3, that says, the Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy, and we have such an amazing report to share, going to share that report, going to share a little bit about our vision when we go back early in 2022, when we head back to Moldova, and then going to just share a 12, 15 minute challenge from God's Word. So um, put your seatbelts on, get ready for this. I, I, I don't know, this is, I, I'm in this moment right now where I just would love this to just go on and on, and I haven't even started, I just know this is going to be such a good morning, and uh, so, my wife and I, we, we are, uh, I'm a Wisconsin boy, as I said, my wife's from North Dakota, then Minneapolis area, and we met at North Central, got married way back in 83, headed out in ministry here in the district for 20 years, different pastoral roles, and over those 20 years led um, 10 short-term mission trips, and in 2005, after our 10th short-term mission trip, God calls us back, God calls us to full-time ministry in Moldova, and now we have been doing missions in Moldova since we, since we got there in 2007, and uh, it's just, it's hard to believe we're talking about 2021 here, heading into 22, it's, it has gone so fast, God has been so good, and I just feel like we should still be like making youth group plans for next Wednesday, you know, planning, getting the leadership team together, and what are we going to be doing in youth group next week? It just, time flies, doesn't it? And, uh, um, and as I was driving up, got up early this morning, it was actually dark when I started driving from Waukesha, and uh, the sun was coming up behind my, behind my rear view window, and just had a great drive up. Um, was playing some Romanian music about halfway up because Moldova, they speak Romanian and Russian. Romanian's our, our national language there. But, uh, and I was really just thinking, I'm, I'm just kind of rambling right now, so this doesn't count towards my actual time. <laughs> but I was just, I was thinking what a blessing it is to, to be doing something that we absolutely love, my wife and I, we really can't wait to get back to Moldova. And uh, I'm just, I was just listening to some Romanian worship music, because that's kind of the language that our country speaks along with Russian, but we're specifically learning Romanian. And, and it was just so beautiful and just touching me and just, like, pulling me back to Moldova. And I'm just amazed at what God is doing and, and feels so privilege that to be involved in something God's called us to, to love it so much, and certainly we miss our family. We have grandkids coming now, all three of our children. You can see our family here. We have three grown children. They're all married now, and we got the grandkids coming. One just came on, look at this, on 4 3 two, one. He was a, He just came in April. That's an easy birthday to remember, but Declan and Dodger, or Declan's sitting on my shoulder, Dodger there on my other shoulder, and we've just been loving any, any moments we've been able to be together, but uh, my oldest son's in Arizona, the other one's out in Seattle, and my daughter's down in the Milwaukee area, 
And she doesn't have any kids yet, but she's got a Labradoodle, which is pretty, pretty good. <laughs> pretty good dog, if you know what a Labradoodle is. Um, anyway, we love our family. We love what God's called us to do in Moldova. And let, let's, let's start talking about Moldova. And just from the beginning, the Lord has done great things. And let me, let me tell you about them. Um, where's Moldova? You can see it here in Eastern Europe. And uh, sandwiched between Ukraine and Romania, a former Soviet republic. You can see how it looks like it was a part of Romania. And uh, after World War II, it was chopped off. That northeast corner uh, of Romania was chopped off. And it became the USSR. Moldavia, and for almost 50 years it was underneath the Soviet uh, Union. In 91, they, de they declared their independence. August 27th is their July 4th. So they just became 30 years old as a country this year. And my wife and I have been there almost half of its existence as a country, which is, is very interesting to watch it try and come into its own. It's Europe's poorest country. It's uh, you, you can read some of these things. I don't have to tell you them all, but um, there's about three and a half million people and about a million or more outside the country working, sending back remittances. It's, uh, it's a country that's got many problems, and I list some of them there. Uh, it's the number one shrinking com country, depopulation, in Europe, and I think it's in the top ten in the world. People are just trying to get out of there. They're just the number one difference between America and, and Moldova would be opportunity. They're just looking for an opportunity. They're just looking for somehow to get on the other side of the grind of life of just surviving another day and making ends meet. And uh, you know, your brothers and sisters in the church over there is really beautiful, and they they love God. They they don't have a lot of extra money for a lot of extra toys and games and going to the mall and bowling and movies and all this. Uh, and, and it's really wonderful to engage with them and be involved in kingdom work with them and uh, get your hands dirty with them. And they, you know, around the world, people are people, and they have such a genuine love for God and dependence upon God. And I'm going to show you what God is, is doing and has been doing in Moldova, and something very special started in 2020, which is a year we all kind of maybe want to write off and say, do a rewind on that whole year, take us back to 2019, let's come in and have a do-over on that 2020 year. But uh, here's, here's just a, to give you a little context. We do have a capital city, Chisinau, of about seven, 800,000 where we live. But a lot of what I'm going to be sharing with you today is in the rural areas and a lot of new churches that we've been able to help with. But you can just take a, a little look at the rural settings here, whether it's the simple, simple living, simple village homes, not too many yards. Everybody's yard is a garden and some chickens running around and hopefully the family has a cow and it's going to the well to get water every day. Most homes don't have indoor plumbing, which means outdoor restroom facilities as well. There are four season climates, so you can imagine some of that gets kind of difficult in the middle of winter and stuff or any time, but um, horse and carts, it's always interesting in Moldova. Sometimes you'll see horse and carts with license plates. We, we certainly have cars, but in the rural areas, it's not uncommon to see lots of horse and carts and going to the well for water and maybe in winter seeing some sleds come out. But I want to tell you about um, something God did in a little thing, 20 churches in 2020. And I just want to give you a little bit of the backdrop on this. It was, uh, like I said, this, this February of this year, we came home, 2021, for our year home of itineration. Well, back up a little bit to late spring, early summer of 2019. I'm in Moldova, kind of minding my own business, and all of a sudden, 2020 starting to pop into my mind, and I don't know why. It was 2019, a few, you know, uh, maybe I was just beginning to look ahead. What are we going to do? What projects? What mission teams might be coming in 2020, our last year of the four years before we'll go home to itinerate? And I'm just kind of minding my own business, and over a week or two, it was just noticeable, noticeable to me that 2020s just keeps popping into my mind. And that wasn't, I guess, not too strange, but all of a sudden, 
one day, all of a sudden, there was a little addition to just the 2020 popping in my mind. And this is what happened. Here comes this year nudging of 20 churches in 2020. And I, I, I can't give you the exact day, but I can give you the exact feeling of that moment was, I think that's God. I hope that's not God because that is just craziness. And I'm going to go to the kitchen and get some coffee. <laughs> have, you, have you ever had God speak to you about something and it, and it scared you? Because it was just too big. It was just too, like, out of the ordinary, just out of your comfort zone. Usually we help, we, over our 15 years in Moldova, we've helped with a number of church projects, new church projects, missional stuff, helping get a new church started or a new project where, in an area where there's no church. And here, so that wasn't so strange, but, and we've hosted mission teams throughout the years, four, three, four, five a year to help with the projects, but we've never, like, thought of, like, 20 in one year, you know, it's more manageable, three, four, five, whatever, and so this 20 churches in 2020, this is just, like, I'm just minding my own business, and this just comes in, and I just knew that was God from the beginning, and I was hoping it was just Troy's thought, because 20 and 2020, oh, it sounds real cool. And, you know, I always like three-point sermons, all starting in C or P or S. So I was just hoping it was a Troy thought. Well, oh, it, it really took me over a couple weeks that this kept coming back. And I finally said, this is God, and I have no idea how this is going to happen. But I said yes to God. I just, I'm just telling you. Very, very sincerely, I did not know what to do with 20 churches in 2020. This is 2019, the summer. I began to take these baby steps and move forward in the little ways that I could. I wasn't home itinerating to come to a church like this, share this vision. You, maybe you guys can help with a portion or take on a project. Next week, I'm in another church sharing them. I'm in Moldova. I'm not home itinerating. And uh, I don't even know what's coming up in 2020. I'm starting to take these baby steps to just connect with pastors in Moldova, find out if there's any home churches, little home gatherings that are ready for their first church, you know, that there's a mother church that will help sustain it and, and encourage it and be there to, to support it. And this took some time. And, you know, I'm moving you through 2019. Eventually, I came up with this little brochure that had 20 places on it, has a designated amount for each place. And my daughter made this because I can't do this kind of technical promotional stuff. So she made this. And you know what? I felt pretty good. I mean, this is obviously a few months later because it took time to make all those connections. So I get this brochure, and I'm going... Hey, God, look what we got here. We're kind of moving ahead on this 20 churches in 2020 vision. Looks pretty sharp. I like blue. You know that. I got it in blue. And so uh, there's about $200,000 represented in this paper. I had a piece of paper. I had 20 churches. I had no money. So like, okay, God, now we're this far. <laughs> now what do we do? And it's just amazing. I I'm just going to fast forward right to it. God did it. God did it in 2020. And, and he... Oh, Slava Domna Louis. Let's all learn to say that. Slava Domna Louis, right? All right. The praise belongs to the Lord. Here is the 20 places. Now, check this out. Boragon, Boshkana, Bubuyech, Kainar, Katranik, Kishinev. That's the capital city where we live. Chimishen, Cheresh, Korlaten... Krikova, Dolna, Georgia Lesht, Hirjalka, Humalesht, Marishen, Mikleoshen, Petresh, Redenivek, Skoren, Vada Voda. Pretty much just like English, right? We're missing some of the little tales that make the sh or the different things. But these 20 places, almost all of them have a, have a new church up or a new facility that's up, and today they're eight hours ahead and they had service. And through the week they're having ministry to children and elderly and midweek services and prayer times and Sunday services. And I think if I, would, if I took time to count, I think maybe two or three are still in, the, in process, but almost all of these, 75, 80% of these, are up and meeting. And 
you know, I shared a little bit of the whole story coming into this. 2019, you know, God challenging, making the brochure, taking the steps of faith. And I didn't know COVID was coming in 2020. Did you? No, God only knew. I didn't know six mission teams would all cancel on me, but that happened. And you know what? That's what makes this even that much more incredible that God still did this. Four or five times what we normally do in the midst of COVID, in the midst of no mission teams. Because when mission teams come, of course, they have funds that they bring to work on a new project. They bring anywhere. We've had five to 25 on our mission teams. So they bring a workforce. They bring funds. And that would have represented about six projects sponsored right there, right? So I thought going in, we got, well, we got six covered, God. Now you work on the other 14. Well, come into 2020, we got nothing. <laughs> and we get locked down just like you were here in America. And we really didn't even get to start on much until almost the first week of July. And God did this. You want to see a few places? Do you want to see what God did? Now I can't show you all 20. I could, I could, I could, we would be here for a while. But I could show you all these 20 places. I could show you pictures. I could show you the leaders. We've been to these 20 places many times. We've worked in these places. We've prayed with the leaders. We've, we've together tried to strategize how to do this. We've done different outreaches with them. I've taken young people there for services. We've got our hands dirty at different ones when we worked in the country, even without teams. We were just working with teams we put together in the country or with just the local church. We know all these places. We've been to all of them. We love these places. I can't wait to get back to Moldova, and I'll be going to all these places as soon as we get back through 2022. And so let me just show you a few of what the Lord has been doing. We may have to do that one song again at the end. What's it called? Great things. There we go. The Lord has done great things for us, and we're filled with joy. Anybody got some joy here? You haven't even seen the great things God has done, but you're, you're picking up the spirit here. So take a look at Bada Louis Voda. What do you see here? Nothing. Okay, we got to get the faith to arise. You should say a church. That's the, that's the appropriate answer. What do you see here? A church, okay? That's, that's faith. Now, it'll rise by the time we get going here. I'll ask that, Christy, again. We'll see how you're doing the next time. But watch what God does. Just watch the progression here. Um, over in Eastern Europe, of course, and in that part of the world, they love concrete. One of our first, well, the first wooden building we did a couple years ago, that little, little building right here wasn't the 2020 project. The 2020 project was to make it about three times the size. So look what happens here. It was a smaller church, but we are happy. But look what happens here, and watch as this became a 2020 project, Vada Louis Voda. This gets going. Here we go. Look at this. Is that looking good? Now, there's the real church. That's the church. They're having a baptismal service. And Chini va crede, she se va boteza, va fi mintuit. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. So we know the church isn't a building, but God uses buildings for the church to gather at, right? And you got a beautiful church here, by the way, too, in the whole setting. Love this. By the way, those of you who go all the way back to Tom Lemberg, I was just down there uh, a weekend ago. Um, so and in that area, sectional thing. So greetings from Pastor Tom. Um, anyway, praise God. That's Vada Louis Voda. Now, sometimes we built from the ground up. Sometimes... We took a, a village home or a property, that's all we could get. And here in Humalesh, take a look at this. Uh, a team from West Layton had actually come and helped us get started on this. Um, the, the mother church for this is Bubuyech. You don't know all this, I'm kind of saying these things for myself, really. But anyway, Pastor Sasha at this mother church in Bubuyech, a beautiful two story building, church building we've built over the last 10 years, he's pulling on my on my shirt, Troy, Troy, can Humalesh be one of the 2020 projects? And he's telling me it's a small village, only about 700, but we go there every Sunday afternoon and we're doing different outreaches and we don't even have a place to meet. We just gather in the little dusty soccer field and we just have church. And even in the winter, we'll just gather out there and there's children and some adults that are coming and we've been doing this for a couple years. Well, we got this property. There was, there, there was not even a little store there for milk or bread or anything. We bought this little property, transformed the house, the bigger, bigger house, into a church. And watch, watch how we new roof, gutted the inside, just new windows, moved the door, 
They have really nice outdoor facilities. And just take a look at how this thing finished. And they probably have 30, 40, maybe 50% of the children of this village coming on a regular basis after school, receiving a meal, receiving help with their schoolwork, receiving a Bible lesson. And the church, this next photo, look at this. Now, it's set up for COVID, but they can get 40 or 50 in there. It turned out so great. I love this little project, and it's just a simple village, but God knows who Maleshed. Most of Moldova doesn't even know who Maleshed. Let's take a look at Miklio Shannon Dolna. Now, you'll see here Pastor Victor, or Pastor Nico, and his wife, Veronica. Right behind them is a 2020 project, and if I had time, I could show you pictures and how that thing was built, but I'm not going to do that, but I'm just telling you, right behind Pastor Niku and Mikhail Shen, they got this new church, and they were a strong mother church already. They're one of only two that we built them. A, uh, the rest were all brand new first church. They already had a small church and were a little more established, but I just believed in, in their church planting desire so strongly that I needed to get them a bigger church. So his wife, Veronica, born and raised about five miles down the road in Dolna. So here's Dolna. There's the little city, the little village center where you get your little van ride or you pick up the bus and just, you know, somebody's selling some fruits and vegetables across the street and just a very, about 2,500, 3,000, little village. Well, right behind where you see that van, the church had this little piece of property in this little house. Now, this house was not able to be retrofitted. And, and if you looked in my brochure, I think I have about 7,000 designated to help in Dolna. And, uh, you know, anywhere from five to 20,000 is most of these projects. And they, probably most of them got between 10 and 12,000. But God always took us further than we thought we'd go because most of our places, for 10,000, they don't get done. Well, okay, we took this money. We couldn't, we couldn't rebuild the house or retrofit it. We said, all right, let, let's excavate the land. Let's start with the foundation. Let's get as far as we can, buy some materials, and we'll just see. And maybe you have some contacts, and we'll see how far we go. I remember standing right on this lower corner with Niku when this thing got poured. Today they're pouring. They, they call that big cement truck the elephant, the elephant. <laughs> and when we got this poured, we were standing at the corner there, and this slab, this beautiful, like, smooth slab of, of, of foundation and concrete. And we feel like the church is done. We're so happy. We're on our way. Look at this. There's going to be a church here someday. I don't know when, but this is how far we got, and we're on our way. And check, Dolna's done. God bless you, Nico. I got to go to the next project. And you guys keep praying. And however God helps you start building at some point, I don't know. But I got to go to the next one. I didn't tell him that, but that's what I was thinking inside, you know. You know, we, we had a designated amount, check, and we did what we said we would do towards this project. Well, this was in September of last year, into October. And... I'm, I'm not even a big promotional guy. I don't even know how God did this, but he brought in like 30, 35,000, and we just kept building. And next thing I know, look at this thing got done. January, a month before we came home, we were having the first service in here right there. Uh, and those of you that have even remodeled your house or your basement, let alone built a building, and I'm not a, and I'm, don't, don't be tricked here. I'm not a construction guy. Okay, I was a pastor, and uh, I don't know, what, what am I? I don't know what I am, but now I'm a missionary, and I just, I'm an administrator more than mo building. But you look at this, you know all that stuff takes work. The, 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 the framing of it, the electrical, the insulation, the drywall, the flooring, the windows, the doors, the exterior, the roofing, I mean, everything. And that got done. That that was an absolute miracle. January, we were having the first service there in Dolan. Take a look at, let's go on. Has God done great things? Anybody, this is some really good stuff. This is in 2020. There wasn't too much happening around the world that maybe we would call great things. But in Moldova, God was busting out. And check this out. Let's go to, uh, where are we going to? Kainar, I think. Okay, here's a little typical village setting. In Kainar, here's Pastor Mihai. 
in his little home church. He's got a room in his home, you know. In the book of Acts and in the New Testament, a lot of the churches are little home churches meeting in somebody's house. And you know what a home church is, a glorified small group. And here he put some little, he got a hold of some chairs like this, and he tried to make his little room in his house look like a church as much as he could, seating for 19 um, without anybody being on your lap. Well, they had a piece of land. And I went out there with one of our central region bishops or, or like presbyters, leaders. And on this land, uh, we said, this got to be a 2020 project. We'll, we'll help with what we can. Let, let's get this foundation started. Let's see what God does. We got the foundation started. Now, have you ever seen a slab of cement look so good? you see that? I, when I see a slab of cement, it's like I get so excited because it's like I know what's coming. We're on our way. And here's a little thing about Moldova. Um, and I can't get into the whole uh, culture there and, and things, but sometimes we have opposition. And sometimes the, the mayor, they won't give us a stamp. Any of you know from Soviet movies or literature, you know, everything's got a signature, a stamp, an approval. Sometimes you're waiting in line, you're just appealing. It, it took us over a year. We were ready to do something in Kainar in 2020. We didn't get the final approval until spring of this year. So I know it's not in 2020, but still, my commitment and my finances had been given to them and it was just waiting for them to get the signature. Well, they got going this summer. They got there. This has just been happening in the last month, month and a half. And this is where they are now. And look what this picture is from just this past week. Just came in. I got one more, I think. Ryan, here we go. Ryan, is that, are we at the end? Oh, okay, it didn't get on there. See, it's so new, I didn't get it to you. There's another picture of them meeting in there for church. It's awesome. You know, you just see all the studs. It's not insulated. They kind of got their coats on. It's starting to get chilly there. But they're meeting in there having church. They got the windows. They got the doors on. It's time to use the building, right? And so Kainar is on its way. And, and there was a, I don't know, there was 50, 60, 70 people in there. So that is just awesome to see. Just, just coming in this week, this thing is still on the move. Let's look at Marishen. Check this out. This Pastor Victor, great friend of mine, his dad, his father-in-law is the, the bishop over all the country. You know, there's something about longevity that's very important in ministry. And I know Pastor Nathan and Christy, they've been here many years, so they have relationship. You know them. You you know what they're about. It's not hard for you to follow them and their vision or to trust them. And they have longevity here. And some of you longer than them, but whatever. Us being in Moldova, now almost 15 years, we, we know all the leaders. You know, Moldova will fit in Wisconsin about four or five times. So that just gave you an idea how it's a country, but Wisconsin's a state, but we fit in Wisconsin a number of times. But we, we know all the, the leaders, we know so many pastors, and, and we're, just, we're, we're just like co-laborers in the kingdom over there, and it's such a wonderful thing to have this partnership. So look what happens in Marishen. This is even up to a week before we come home, just to see the commitment of these people. Look at them up on the roof here in the middle of February. This is a week before we came home in February, and I just sent him a note a couple weeks ago, hey, Victor... What's uh, up with the church? Did you make more progress on the inside? This And the church is done. And I, you know, I just can't keep showing you photos, but I could take you inside. They got all the cute little rooms done and the mother and baby's room and the sanctuary and nice chairs. Somehow it all got done. This is a great story here. And I got to just add to it. Victor also added, and I'll, I'll read you directly from his little, this is hot off the press like a week ago. Hello, Troy. Every Monday, we distribute bread from our bakery for the poor people in the church building. First, we do Bible lesson in the church building. Then we help the needy people. His English is a little broken. Two times a week, we feed 25 poor kids in the church building. And I'm, I'm sure they probably come after school, and they help them with their homework, and they will have a Bible lesson. A number of our churches will have children's ministry like that. And then he writes this. We had a big opposition when we came into this area, or into the village, in the beginning. Now the atmosphere has changed. 
After we build the church building, people are saying this is like star in the darkness. This area start to shine. And I re- the first time I read that, when it just popped up on my Facebook Messenger, I, I actually welled up a little bit because I know exactly what he's saying there, that this, this church, I, it's a place of hope in, in this village. You know, I, I can't build enough alcohol treatment centers and anti-trafficking homes and uh, family, family centers and, and this and that in every village, but we can build a church. And the church is, it meets every need through Jesus. And it's a place of healing, it's a place of help, it's a place of strength, it's a place of hope, it's a place of faith, it's a place of whatever is needed. Um, It's a place of freedom and deliverance. And so this church, it's a star in the darkness. He was saying, we we know, be the light in the world. It's the light in this village where there's a lot of darkness and heaviness and abuse and alcoholism and, and, and so many things that hold people captive. Um, and this church is a star in the darkness, and the area is starting to shine. I love that. Last, last one. Take a look at this. What do you see here, Christy? Yes. See that? I told you faith would rise. There you go. This is a church. Now, this was, it, what was it? It was a former, <laughs> it was a former Soviet library. And, you know, look, you can see, nothing's been going on there. But watch what, what God does with this place. Slava Domna Louis. The Lord has done great things for us. New roof. You can't see the roof. New windows. Everything outside redone. Inside retrofitted. Added a room in the back room. Knocked out that little door. And check this out. Now, midweek Bible studies. Children coming after school, getting help, getting food, get, getting by, learning about Jesus. And Sundays, this is happening. You see that by faith? Right now, I don't, I don't know in the big scheme of things, only God knew this call in 2019 to 20 churches in 2020 and how just ridiculous that was to me. And really, I missionary or not, I didn't have the faith for it. Um, I didn't know how it would happen. And I kind of went, went forward with God, you know, dra- kind of screaming a little bit. And How are we going to do this? What, what, uh, what are we doing here? You know? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you have better ideas than this. And we just, to see God do this is so incredible. And God did this. And you know what? I, God put a little thought in my mind, thinking of David and Goliath. When God helps you take down the bear and the lion, you don't go after a chicken. You know what's next is Goliath, not the chicken, right? You kind of progress in faith. And we have a new vision going back, and uh, we're not going after a chicken. We are, we are going after, what I, for lack of being original, uh, you, now it's on the front of this one, the old flyer, but um, I didn't have time to make a whole new plan. But I got a new vision. And it's not tied to the year 2020 or 2022, but it's more biblical, it's missional, it's from the book of Acts, and it's from missionary Paul. Now watch this. This is called the 2020 vision. And when you think of the Apostle Paul, missionary Paul in the book of Acts, what was he doing? He was either in, mostly in the second part of the book of Acts. He's either going into new places where there's no church, and he was helping start new churches, all right? And God raised up missionary Paul, sent him as the missionary of the Gentiles. And he's either going in places, mostly through modern-day Turkey. He started out, and, you know, a lot of our churches in the New Testament, Paul wrote half of the New Testament. So, number one, he's either starting new churches, I'll say building, establishing new works, or he's coming around on a second, third missionary journey, and he's strengthening the churches he started, right? So that's what he's doing. And that's the 2020 vision for us. We're going to build churches, and we're going to strengthen churches. So we're going back, and our goal is to build another 20, to go after another 20 church projects with, we can go, Ryan, here we go. We're going back, there we go. We're going back, targeting 20 more churches, and 
We're, the the 10000 is starter money. Whether we've got to buy land, whether we're buying a building and retrofit it, whether we're, whatever we need to do, that's, that's the target amount towards each project, and we'll just watch God multiply it. But we're going back to build, to establish, to start another twenty, And then we want 5000 for the 20 we already did to strengthen them. I want to come to Pastor Niku, Pastor Sasha, Pastor Victor, and say, hey, how's the church in Vada Voda? How's the church in Marishin? How, how's the church in, uh, you know, Humalesh? I have some money. What can we do in evangelism and outreach and blessing the community? What kind of resources do you need? And we want to strengthen you and continue to help you to be the light shining in your village. And then in the other places, we'll be starting those from new. So that's very simple, isn't it? Building the church, strengthening the church. That's what we're about. So that's the simple vision, easy to get handles on. And uh, to pull this all together now, I just want to give me about 10, 12 minutes of your time. And I want to share a little devotional. It's very, very cool how God brought this to me, a devotional message this morning from God's Word in Acts chapter 8. And God gave me this message in a taxi. And I barely ever ride a taxi in Moldova. Now they're pretty cheap, about $3. You can go, go anywhere in the capital city, which would probably cost you 50 bucks over in Western Europe. But in Eastern Europe and in the poorest country in, in Europe, things are a little cheaper. And it was, just, it was just a morning where we had a meeting. And, I, and we have a speed to light vehicle, by the way. I wish all your young people were here. We did so many things in our youth group days for giving money to help missionaries get vehicles and sound equipment and the, the rummage sales, the bake-offs, the chicken dinners. I remember the rummage sale for three days in my yard. That was the worst idea I ever had. Never did that one again. Three days, can you imagine? We had 24 going to Guatemala, I think, or, or England, I don't remember. And I had this idea to do a rummage sale, like, yeah, bring all your stuff. I didn't say junk. Bring all your stuff to my house, and we'll just fill my front yard and backyard with all this stuff, and we'll just have all of Appleton come tra- traipsing through my yard for three days. So we did it. Whatever. Anyway, speaking of the vehicles, Speed the Light and what the young people do, we're still driving ours. It's 15 years old. It's an old 07, and we'll go back, and we're hoping to get 20 years, go for 20 years, but we love it. So I have a Speed the Light vehicle from the young people in our district. And I love it. And it's a very perfect car for Moldova. You know, one morning in, in the capital city, I just felt like, oh, n- just need a break. I just don't want to deal with traffic. Let's just take a taxi, Heidi. So get in the taxi. Within a minute, I had opened up my Bible. Not because I'm so spiritual and I just read the Bible everywhere. I hadn't read this chapter, and I was going to a little meeting with fellow missionaries, and we were, like, going through different chapters in the book of Acts, and I hadn't read it, so I'm trying to do a quick read in the, in the taxi, just letting you know how spiritual I am and on top of all my Bible reading. Well, I open this up within a minute. I get these thoughts from chapter 8 in this little section, and this was, this was at the same time God was just beginning to speak to me about this. We had no flyer. I didn't say yes to God that I'll be in on this. We, nothing like that. I just got this, and I thought it was a cool little little message here. Well, little did I realize how this message would become so foundational to what we're about. Okay, Acts 1.8, you all know this. Before Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. You're going to be my witnesses in Plover, greater region of Wisconsin, and all the way to Moldova. Okay, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Okay, so we know that. That's a great missional verse. Now flip that on its head, go to Acts 8.1. Look what happens here. On that day, what day? The day that Stephen was martyred just a few verses back in chapter 8. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. At this time, the church was only in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 1.8 through the first seven chapters was only being fulfilled in Jerusalem. But in chapter 8, verse 1, on that day of Stephen's martyrdom, All except the apostles were scattered where? Throughout Judea and Samaria. And God begins to accomplish Acts 1.8 in 8.1 in a way that the church wasn't expecting. Now, this is very interesting, and I haven't thought so much about it and, and don't have time. I'll let Nathan think about this a little more and bring more depth to it. But, you know, chapter 8, verse 1 here in the church going to Judea and Samaria, I think in the 
first chapters, chapters one through seven, I think when the church was getting together and the leaders and they're having their church growth seminars and their board meetings and the pastors would have their little sectional meetings and discuss about how we're going to begin to go to Judea and Samaria, I don't think persecution came up as part of the plan. I think they maybe had some other church growth ideas of how it would be accomplished. And you know what? I don't think coming into 2020, too many seminars or conferences or different things were going on talking about COVID being a way to send this gospel around the world through a little something called media and social media and all this technology stuff. But God knew it was coming. And God is doing things that way beyond what, what, what we can fathom here. And I believe Acts 8.1 is a little bit what's happening maybe today with COVID. And God is sending this gospel to people who maybe never would have stepped in church, but they, they were at home and they watched it on Zoom or something for the first time. Maybe heard, heard the gospel message. Maybe you were considered their personal relationship and their, their faith walk. So who knows what God is doing? But I just thought that was interesting. God uses persecution. And the church begins to accomplish Acts 1-8 in 8-1. And in the next couple of verses, Paul, at this time he's Saul, because he hasn't fallen off his horse yet and had his conversion experience. So he becomes the modern KGB in the next two, three, four. He's going from house to house. He's dragging out the believers, those that are followers of, of the Christ, of Jesus. And he's hauling them off and he's persecuting the church. And the, I tell you that as a little context for this little passage I read in verses 4 to 8. The, the church, the very first story, Philip in Samaria, if you have your Bibles open or if you go home and read that today, the very first five-verse story after the church begins to go to Judea, Samaria, is called Philip in Samaria. And there were four things that they, and they just go one after another, right, flowing right from the verses. And there are four ways for us to pray, us to pray in Moldova and as missionaries when we're going into new places and we're trying to establish a new church or a new work, as well as for you in your sphere of influence, how to pray for family members, extended family members, neighborhood friends, colleagues at work classmates, roommates, whatever it may be, your little sphere of influence, uh, how you can pray for those that you want to see come closer to God and in relationship with him. Now watch this. Number one, we need to pray for Jesus to be proclaimed. The first couple verses, verse 4 and 5, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. You know what I would have done if I were Philip? Philip? And Philip probably knew Stephen very well. Maybe they were good friends. They were both leaders in the church. And now his good friend had been, maybe he was there even when he was stoned to death. Maybe he was just following every day or that day this whole defense Stephen was trying to make. Chapter 7, this whole chapter of Stephen trying to defend a faith. And maybe Stephen saw him killed. You know, if I was Philip, I would have probably went to maybe Judea or Samaria, and went up in the hills and hid because they're throwing rocks now at people like me because of our faith, and they're killing people. And I think I'm going to go wait this out up in the rocky area and just let things settle down. Well, here's Philip. Goes to Samaria. Remember John 4, the woman at the well? And she looks at Jesus, and she goes, why are you talking to me? Samaritans and Jews, we don't, we don't get along. We don't talk to each other. And here's Philip. In Samaria, what's he doing? Is he hiding? No. He's preaching and proclaiming Jesus is the Messiah. He's the anointed one. He's the Son of God. He's the Savior that God sent into the world. And he's just, wherever he goes, he's going after it. He doesn't stop. I love the verse in Ephesians 6.19, a little supplemental verse. Pray that whenever I speak, this is Paul's words again, words can be given me so I can fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. In the next verse, it continues, and just watch this little progression. Next, we should pray for open minds and hearts. Look at verse 6. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. This is so great. Notice the verbs. They saw, they heard, they paid close attention. And this is just incredible because God is opening minds and hearts here. 
in an area where in many ways they would be closed, or you would think they should be closed from the messenger Philip coming from Jerusalem. But God is opening minds and hearts. One of my favorite things, you know, my faith really, really took off when I was in the middle of my high school years, actually right in the middle of my high school years over at D.C. Everest. God got a hold of me as a young person. And, um, you know, sometimes I think back to how, God, how, how did you do that? How did you get a hold of me? You know, as a young, young person in your high school years, you're not really thinking about spiritual things a lot. You're thinking about a lot of other things, car and money and, I don't know, hanging out with friends and, you know, music and just everything, almost anything but God. Well, God gets a hold of me. One of my favorite things I started listening to was Unshackled. You ever heard of that? It's just a continual story. And I've taken trips down there in Chicago now at the Pacific Garden Mission, which used to be a bar. And over time, it became a ministry center and still is today. And it's just one story after another how God changed the life. And anyway, that became one of my favorite programs. If we had time in here to just hear everybody's story and how God worked in your life, Maybe, maybe some of you at one time, you are like really opposed to this whole Christian faith and you would give the, those who talked about their faith or about God at work, you would give them a hard time, you would cuss at them, you would tell them, what do you, what do you believe in that stupid stuff? Why are you going to church? Maybe some of you were like that at one time. Maybe some of you were just had your doubts and it took you a little time to, and you had questions and, and you, you came along but it took some time. Maybe some of you... There was just, it was a, just a moment like that, bang, you, it was just time to start living for God. In Colossians, look at this. Pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so we can proclaim the mystery of Christ. Look at Acts 17, what I was just kind of sharing with you, different points. In Acts 17, Paul's down in Athens, and Paul is a pretty studied guy, you know, he could handle himself. And the Greeks, they always loved to philosophize and study the latest uh, theories of the day. Well, they're talking about the resurrection of the dead. It comes to the end of the chapter, and it says, when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, look at the responses. Some sneered. Others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. And then others, or some, became followers and believed that day. I love that little progression right there, and I think that's almost the same story, perhaps, would sum up our lives in here. And it probably... Those that are in your sphere of influence fit in, these, in one of these categories. And you know what? I can't do a thing about that. I'm just called to be a witness. We're called to be witnesses for Jesus. And you know what? He opens minds and hearts in very unexpected ways. Somebody says, oh, that person, he'll, he would never have any interest in God. He would never go to church. You won't ever get through to him. Next thing you know, God's work in that person's life. Somehow his mind, his heart got open. Maybe you were one of those people. So this is an incredible verse. So God, we pray for God, for, for Jesus to be proclaimed. We pray for open minds and hearts. Look at the next verse. These are going one after another. We pray for the power of God to be displayed. Look at verse 7. For with shrieks and pure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. God just is at work. Philip's just, Philip hasn't gone to the latest class, I don't know, about how to pray to, for people to be healed or delivered or set free. I don't know. He's just, he's just doing what he knows to do and what he's experienced. Jesus is real. He's the resurrected Lord and Savior. He's in my life. He's alive. And I'm just here to tell you he was the real deal. And God is at work. And you know what? When, what do you think I want to do when I go into a new village in Moldova? I want to pray, Lord, I don't know anybody in this village. There's 2,000 people here. There's 4,000. Sometimes we have big villages, six, 8,000. God, we just believe this is a time, and you're calling us for a new project here. Will you help us to proclaim Jesus? God, will you open minds and hearts? I, I know there's a lot of... Cl a lot of people that are close to you or they don't have any interest in you. Will, will you begin to open minds and hearts? God, will you, will you, here, just go ahead, step in front, and will you, like, just go ahead and, like, let your power get working a little bit? <laughs> and we just want to see your power. Just start moving, touching individuals, families, however you do it, God, whatever way that is, whether it's a physical touch, whether it's a 
a change of mind and attitude. Whatever you do, if it's setting someone free, delivering somebody. You know, I don't know what's all involved. All I know, this is what Philip did. And you know what I thought? I'm going to just pray for God's power to be displayed. I'm going to pray for God to open minds and hearts. I'm going to pray for God to just help us to proclaim him. Isn't this a beautiful progression? Wait until you get to the last verse, but don't show that yet, Ryan. Look, look at the, this little quote here. This is one of my favorites. The mission of God's people is to alert everyone everywhere to the reign of God in Christ. Sometimes as we travel around, that's a powerful statement. Um, as we travel around, we'll come into a new town or city, and all of a sudden there'll be a business under new management or new restaurant. And it means things are changing, right? I don't know how things were going before, but there's new management here, and we're doing things a different way, and we've we got new men, a new menu and new dishes, and you're going to like it. You know what? Ever since Jesus came to earth, we are under new management. And you know what my job is? I'm alerting people and just saying, hey, that doesn't have to control your life. You don't have to. You can have joy in your life. You don't have to live and not have peace in your life. You can know real love. You know, I'm just alerting them that there's a new manager in town. This restaurant, new things are coming out on the menu. There's some really good fruit. <laughs> if you get that fruit of the Spirit. I mean, we just got a great menu here, and we're under new management. So I love that quote. We're alerting, we're alerting everyone everywhere to the reign of God that's in Christ now. All right? Um, finally, we'll jump ahead. Those of you that want to dig a little more in depth, Luke 4.18, where Jesus begins his public ministry and declares what he's, what he's about, proclaiming the good news, for freedom for prisoners, recovery of sight. These points are basically the same points of the, what I'm sharing with you. If you would meditate on that and you would look at this little outline, it's almost the same thing. And this, today, this week, read chapter 8. You'll see my four points repeated in the chapter. It's like I found this little key. I don't think anybody have ever, has ever seen this, Pastor Nate. I don't think anybody's ever seen this in Scripture, but it really, it stuck out to me. Jesus described ministry as he goes forward, I think, is what happens here in these verses. Let's get to the last point. Look how perfect this is cherry on top of the whipped cream on top of the, the pie, whatever you want to call it. Look at the last verse. So there was great joy in that city. Does this get any better? We pray for great joy. We pray for great joy in the individual, in the family. You know, the Bible talks about the joy of salvation, the joy of, of an individual turning to Jesus, coming back to Jesus, getting their faith started, their relationship with God. We pray for joy. God, we're going into this village. Will you help us to proclaim Jesus here? Will you go before and prepare the way? God, we're, 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 we need you to open minds and hearts. I don't know what's happening in this village. I don't know what some of the walls are or experiences or history or why people are for you or against you, but will you open minds and hearts? God, will your power begin to work in whatever way it needs to work to, to get through to lives? God, will you bring great joy in this village, in this city, in this family, in this individual. And don't think this is just for missionary Troy and Heidi in Moldova. This is for you in your sphere of influence. This is, a, this is real practical stuff. You can pray this, and let's see what God does. Those that, that are on your heart, those that are close to you, those that God brings across your path, there's a reason, and you begin to pray these simple points. And let God go to work. Church, thank you for your involvement, Pastor Nathan, Christy, and the whole leadership. I don't know if you have a missions team here. Everybody, thank you for your work in Moldova. You know, I'm showing stuff, and I'm saying Slava Domnului, and I'm saying great things, and God has done this. And I tried to be as honest and real as I could that I have no special talents in this. Uh, I'm just trying to say yes to God, and it scared me to death, but God did it. And we're going back more and excited than ever. You, you want to know something? In the beginning when God was giving me this vision and I was sharing it with friends in Moldova, you know what I was saying? I was saying, mm, I think, I think, I think God wants me to do this. Because I wanted to leave myself an out. Because I wasn't there believing God wanted to do this. I'm saying, I think God wants me to kind of go after this. He's kind of been speaking to me a little bit, and I think he wants me to do this. Well, I'm not sure. It's kind of a crazy idea by God. But you know what I'm telling you today? 
We're going back to Moldova. We're going after the 2020 vision. I'm not thinking about it. We're doing it. We're going back because my faith has risen. We're not going for a chicken. We're going for Goliath here. And God is moving in Moldova. He started something very special in 2020. It's very obvious to me, our national leaders. And I hate getting older because I just want to keep going back. And I don't want to feel like I'm starting to, I'm not in my 60s yet, but I'm starting to head there this next term. And I don't like that thought. Some of you in your 70s are going, what? I would wish I was 60 again. Well, whatever. But <laughs> anyway, thank you, church. Everything I shared here, you're partners with this. And this is one glimpse. I, I, I was looking at the wall, see everyone you support, and I don't know what's go all going on with my colleagues, but I'm just giving you a little, little glimpse right here in Moldova. You're making a difference. And thank you for your monthly giving and special giving at times. Pastor Nathan, Krista, you know, Heidi and I love you guys. God bless you. God bless you, church. Thank you. Well, thank you. These are the, the kinds of people you support that we get behind and see God do amazing things. Um, those who are helping with the offering, can you come forward and uh, get ready? We are just going to close our service by worshiping the Lord in our giving. Uh, if you want to give specifically to Troy, there's a couple easy ways to do that. On the envelopes in front of you, you can fill that out and just put Troy on that. Uh, and he'll also be out at his table afterwards if you want to consider partnering with him monthly. We do that as a church, but you can do that personally. If, if something he shared today caught your heart and you want to be in on that vision, I encourage you to connect with him at the table and sign up and be a part of that. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray you will anoint this offering, but anoint each one of our hearts that we can be a part of carrying out what we heard about today, that this week isn't just for Troy and Heidi, but it's for each of us to live out in our neighborhoods, in our lives, in our homes. Bless your church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you as you give. Well, as the offering passes you, why don't you stand up and let's sing one lesson. We're going to do great things for you, Pastor. <laughs>